What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Mulletcast, the pod- pa- podcast where business and pleasure collide. My name is Evan Balmer. Follow me on Instagram at Evan Balmer. Uh, today we're joined by John Burnick and Tim Nolan, both with the Cigar Box Stompers. Uh, and John's also the owner of Lazy Bee Guitars, or Lazy Bee Cigar Box Guitars. Yep. Uh, follow both of them online. You can follow them on Instagram, at Cigar Box Stompers, um, LazyBeeCigarGuitars.com, and CigarBoxStompers.com. What's going on, fellas? Hey, Evan. Thanks for having us. No Good problem. Morning. Appreciate it. Good morning. You got it. John, I was walking through the Asbury Fresh Markets. Yes. I saw you playing a cigar box guitar. I was like, I got to talk to this dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you did. Yeah. I'm glad you did, yeah. So it's cool to, yeah. to find out more about you. So can you tell people about what a cigar box guitar is and how they originated? So, so basically, a cigar box guitar is um, any guitar that's made from any kind of box really um cigar boxes really are they they're really the best um to to make a guitar out of mm-hmm. because of materials most cigar boxes are made out of mahogany which believe it or not is really a prime uh prime wood for uh for guitar making right so um so basically even though folks have been making guitars out of cigar boxes really since civil war it really became a thing, really became popular during the Great Depression, during right. the 30s. And, uh, you know, folks couldn't afford, you know, a traditional guitar from the store. Right. You know, there wasn't a, you know, um, there wasn't a um, guitar center, you know, up the road. Right. And uh, folks couldn't afford it. So what they would do is they would make a guitar out of whatever was laying around Mm -hmm. so if it was if there was a cigar box laying around they would they would grab that uh gas cans oil cans anything that's really hollow that'll resonate right uh works really well so um so really they 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 really became popular um during the uh during the depression and um basically what happened was you know folks folks would make the guitar with whatever was laying around. A lot of times the strings were made out of screen wire. Wow. And so if they had one string, they made a one string guitar. <laughs> right. If they had two strings, they, they'd make a two string guitar. So hence the most, the most uh, widely used uh, cigar box guitar has three strings. Right. And really what happened was it really came out of necessity. Um, you know, they didn't have a whole lot of strings. So they would put three strings on a guitar and really blues music was born. Right. So a lot of a lot of blues artists started out on a cigar box guitar. And because there's only three strings, it has that has that really raw sound. Right. Um, the more strings, the fuller the chord, the fuller the sound. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why three strings, four strings. It's really optimal for for like blues rock, Good. blues or rock right. music. So obviously, like at the time of Civil War, is pre amplifiers, right? So right. you're talking like acoustic guitars, basically. Sure. And is sure. that the same like through the Depression? Like when did they become electrified? Yeah. So um, so really, the first I think the first wave of um, cigar box guitars was really a Civil War, and then of course the Depression was really, you know, the second wave. Mm. But then I think. Um, speed up to modern times right i would say the past 20 25 years there's been a resurgence uh among artists and musicians because of the beauty of the sound the simplicity Mm -hmm. um there are lots of fun to build um which kind of my story comes in when i was a kid you know my parents were a little bit older than um than you know my friends' parents, mm-hmm. and uh, I remember my dad telling me that folks would make uh, guitars out of cigar boxes during the during the depression. Right. And um, that's when I first heard about it. But then it wasn't until maybe 10, 15 years ago I started seeing them uh, other builders uh, selling them on eBay. Right. So I bought one and loved it. And yeah. I looked at it and I said, you know what, man. <laughs> I could build these myself. Right. So, um, so we've we've built over 600. We've bought 
we've sold and and used and I got a bunch hanging in my garage. And, right. You know, I have some like this one that um that I gig with, mm -hmm. you know, with the band. Right. With Timmy and uh, Don Haney and and uh, George. So that one that one looks like a so, custom. So you got a license yeah. plate, you got a bottle opener. Yeah, so uh, does that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's for soda pop. Okay, cool. But, <laughs> but um, so this this is my this is what I call my number one. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of the first ones I made, uh, and I gig with this one, and it's it's got some uh, emotional value to it because um, I call my my uh, guitar's Lazy Bee. Right. And uh, my parents had a ranch out in Arizona. I was born in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And they had a ranch, and um, it was called Lazy Bee. Wow. And this license plate um, actually has been laying out, laying up in the attic. This was uh, the license plate that was on uh, a pickup truck uh, from the Lazy Bee Ranch. That's cool. So <clears throat> um, it, it's... It's another thing that you can do with these. Um, it actually adds a little bit, um, you know, to the sound. And, um, you know, it's not laying up in the attic. Right. I can enjoy it. I can see it. And uh, it definitely has uh, some emotional uh, value to it. So, anyway, that's the story behind this one. And just to get back to your other question about amplification, that kind of, in the past uh, 20, 25 years, um, with this newest wave of um, cigar box uh, builders. Um, there's a fellow out in Pennsylvania, Shane Spiel. He, uh, he's been at the forefront. And, um, you know, fellows like that have taken the basic uh, plan of a cigar box guitar and have added some modern features like amplification. Right. Um, on this one, because I, I gig with it, I have a more modern bridge on it. Right. Um, you know, I have modern tuners on it, um, but the, you know, the, the, uh, the design is, is basically the same, mm -hmm. but, uh, and each builder, um, kind of adds their own flair to it. Oh, they're easy know. to customize. They're, you know, there's, Absolutely. everybody has a little piece, like John has his, his license plate there. You have these other people with things from five foot tall mermaids on a bass guitar yeah. to uh, <laughs> some chainsaw cases yeah. and shovels and stuff. so actually yeah and I saw uh, Dispatch was playing in Asbury this weekend and he busted out like he had a it looked like a suitcase guitar right. like it was crazy I mean it was same idea but it was like Very a little cool. kind of travel suitcase Very cool. it was crazy yeah, yeah it's um, that the, counts as a cigar box guitar yeah it's um, it falls into the genre the possibilities are right. you know Unlimited. So when these sort of originate, it's like what right. people would think of as the classic like jug bands. Like you had like a wash tub, like the washboard yep. jugs, all that kind of stuff. And yeah. Homemade yeah. Guitar. I mean, it's yeah. Actually, um, a There's lot of the that. the washboard. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So um, yeah, definitely. I mean, that that whole genre, that whole idea of you know homemade instruments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is is uh, that's really where it comes from. Right. Um, you know, definitely. You mentioned the wash tub uh, bass, and uh, you know, I, I believe probably around the the same time, around the Civil War era, um, they were also making violins. Uh, wow. You know, out of so that that uh, right. you know, it's another area. That's pretty so, cool. Yeah. I've seen a few of those. They're yeah. Pretty interesting. Really? Though. That's intense. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. when you were growing up, you didn't start out playing cigar box guitars. You were playing regular guitar. Yeah. And what kind of music were you into? So I, I guess when I was about eight, you know, my parents bought me a guitar. And, and probably like a lot of folks out there, um, <coughs> I would I would play probably like for six, seven months and then drop it. You know, take lessons and then drop it. Mm -hmm. Pick it up, you know, a year later and then drop it. So I, I, would, I would only get to a certain level you know and then lose interest right the cigar box guitar was really a springboard for me in in a lot of different ways um uh, certainly building um but then after i started building them i'm like you know what i should probably play them so um so that really springboarded you know me playing and um i find that they're a lot easier to play right and um then i actually i had never really started songwriting before um, before I started playing the cigar box guitar. Then, you know, I'd be sitting at show, I 
would start um, doing some markets and vending shows. And, uh, you know, you're sitting there just kind of noodling around. And then you're like, wait a minute, that's a song. Right. <laughs> so, you know, just kind of fooling around on the guitar. I kind of come up with some uh, riffs and some melodies and stuff. And, uh, you know, all my songs really... Almost all of them right. have started on the cigar box guitar, so that started a whole new world for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you just played that, that to me, like that sound, just encapsulates like you know southern blues. Yeah, uh, you know. So yeah. I mean, even when people started playing guitar, is it because they learned on cigar box types of guitars that where the sound came from, or were they trying to emulate the people that came before them? You think? I think I think nowadays, you know, in modern times, I think they're trying to emulate. You know that sound right. and get that sound. Yeah. I mean, you know how uh, you know the story of Eddie Van Halen when he started putting the guitars together, he was, you know, searching for that brown sound, that right. those certain sound. So I think it's the same way, and um, you know, um, I think that's why I have so many, <laughs> so many. You know, each one has has a unique. That's the other thing that depending on what you're, you know, building it right. out of and what materials it's made out of and what the size and shape right. and all that stuff um, really, you know, uh, shapes the sound. Right. Yeah, so so I think, um, and, and me, you know, growing up, you know, um, I, I always liked blues rock, southern rock, and, you know, a lot of those guys, um, you know, like take uh, George Thurgood, mm. for instance, you know, I was, Loved his songs, and then I found out. Wait a minute, he was the original artist for a lot of those. Right. A lot of those were blues, <laughs> right. you know. So I kind of came in the back door. It's, gotcha. I was like second generation. Then I started listening to like Helen Wolf and BB mm. King and right. all those guys. So that's um, pretty cool. So yeah, it's that was that was like you know I grew up in the late '60s and '70s, and um, you know then you find out. Wait a minute, the songs you like, you know they're just cover it They're right just covers you know that's so, cool so yeah so that's interesting now tim you play the harp uh yeah, so i did did you ever we, john did you ever think about like you should play the comb or something like that as opposed to like a harp <laughs> <laughs> i've thought about it it's... we're trying to get them to play spoons maybe that would be cool actually <laughs> Do so you ever feel left out playing harp in like a cigar band? Or no, that's not at all. Important not part at all. Of the... I've been playing harmonica for forty some odd years. And yeah, I learned a total wrong way to play, so I'm a misfit to start with, and I seem to fit in with the other misfits. <laughs> so, what was the wrong way to learn? Uh, I'm basically a pucker player. A lot of harmonica players, most harmonica players, use their tongue, and I don't do that quite so much. I I was in the Navy in a remote listening post in northern Japan and had six feet of snow on the ground. Right. There was a quarter beer machine there, so I'd have a few <laughs> beers and mess around in the harmonica. I was self-taught, so that's how I, I learned the wrong way. And over the years, I just kept with it and uh, started playing with some people and right. had fun doing that. And I was lucky enough to sit in with some people. I had a one-time opportunity. I played with... Um, uh, Dave Brubeck. Oh, really? I was working security, and his son came out with the other guys in the band to uh, warm up. I pulled the harmonica out of my pocket, and they said, oh, cool. Played with him for a few minutes, and Dave Jr. walked away, said, stay right there, I'll be right back. Came back with his dad. His dad brought me over to the piano, and what key do you have, and let's jam. That's cool. Oh, it was fun. It was fun. All right. But I've had lots of things like that where I got to play with people, people from the box tops and all different bands. Right. When you can carry around your instrument with you in your pocket, it, <laughs> that is it makes cool. it very convenient. I wasn't always good. I, I, <laughs> I don't have a musical mind. It took me a long time to get at least where I am now where I'm fairly decent. But right. uh, We actually noticed that when you came in, like John's got like a couple guitars, an amp, all this stuff, and you have one small little case. That is a nice way to travel. Oh, yeah, but I got about 30 harmonicas in there. there you go. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Um, you guys want to play a tune? We got a little sample of the sure. kind of stuff you do. Sure. What do you want to play? Uh, Music. Punch it. <laughs> Let's, uh, I'm gonna punch it.
Cool. So whose song is that? I'm sorry. Whose song is that? So that's original? that's an original. Nice. Yeah, that's an original. Um, Most of the songs we do are originals written by John, and yeah. I think they're pretty good. That's I, a good I'm, tune. Well, thank you, Tim. I, I I like playing the songs. I enjoy the songs every now and then. I'm, I find myself listening to them, and they pop into my head now and then. <laughs> good golly. Yeah. So you get a nice driving guitar sound out of that. What um like what strings do you use? Um, like, so, yeah, go ahead. yeah. Um, so they're they're regular guitar strings. Um, I use a heavier, a heavier gauge, mm -hmm. and um, I met all. Th there, there, there's only three, but on this particular setup, I they're all wound. Mm -hmm. So you get a little bit. Uh, you get a little bit at you know metal on metal sound. Right. So uh, other than that, they're they're um, pretty much you know normal strings. So what strings do you choose? Like what actual note strings? So this is tuned to open E, uh -huh. E chord. Right. So the first one, this is the low E, uh, regular low E uh, string on a guitar. Right. Um, um, e B. So this is B. So this is a um, the second string if you're looking down on a, on a normal guitar. Right. So this would be the A string tuned to a B. Okay. And then this is um, this is a high E. Gotcha. So it, yeah, oh, so cool. it works out well. And what do you use? Uh, so building your first guitar, did you start out building like electric versions or were you building some acoustic ones first? Um, yeah, it, uh, great question. So um, I, I think, you know, it, it was, um, I started building it as an acoustic mm -hmm. and it was probably when I finished it, it was probably an acoustic for probably an hour oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I wanted to stick a pickup on it uh, so and what kind yeah. of pickups that yeah so uh, these these are these are called thin buckers uh -huh. and uh, a friend of mine who has um, um, recently uh, passed um, made them custom for my guitars oh, wow. um, so um, um, you know, um, they're th what makes them so special right. is that they're very thin. Mm. So it's basically wound like a like a normal uh, um, humbucker. Right. It kind of looks like it. Yeah. Um, however, it's only an eighth inch thick. Right. And so it allows me to stick it on the guitar without having to drill a hole, uh, route out a hole, right. or dig into the the frame of the guitar right so um yeah so yeah. It works out well that's cool and then as far as other parts like some of your guitars it looks like you use like 
whatever you can find <laughs> lying around. You got some bolts and like, yep. you know. Yeah, most of it came from Home Depot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I used to have <laughs> so so this one used to have a eye bolt like this one. Wow. Um, so I use an eye bolt here from uh -huh. Home Depot uh, as a bridge, and then they, uh, for the uh, what is called a nut, right. I use a bolt. That's cool. So this is a carriage bolt. Um, on this particular and a dog food bowl. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's oh, that's true. a dog food so, bowl. No way. Yeah, so it's it's a dog dish upside down. No kidding. Yeah, for a resonator. Wow. So yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, a lot of this is like experimentation, right? See what you get oh, yeah. sounds out of. And... Oh, yeah. It's all, you know, it's all experimentation. Right. Let me try this. Let me try that. Yep. And, you know, see how it works right. out. And then back in the day, I imagine people were just using okay. any piece of wood they can find for the neck. And yeah. Where did these necks, I'm, how did they evolve? And yeah. What do you use? Um, so, um, it, as you said, um, it, you know, during the Depression, it was whatever was laying around. So usually a broomstick. Yeah. <laughs> and there's some stories um, of how, you know, some, some of the blues guys would, you know, cut their mom's broomstick off right. to use, you know, and then get in trouble. They get and, beat with it. Yeah, <laughs> right. And then, you know, poke a hole and yeah. I don't know if, if you all ever saw the movie Emmett Otter. Yeah. And the jug band. Right. Chris, uh, I think it's Emmett Otter. Jug band. Jug Christmas band. Or something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So the whole premise around that was, you know, he, he needed a, a wash tub base right. and they used to say, at least there's no hole in the wash tub, but he had to put a hole in it, <laughs> right. you know, to, uh, to make the, 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 base. the stick to it. Yeah. Wow. So, um, so anyway, long, long story, long story getting longer. Right. Um, a lot of times you hear stories about, uh, you know, the blues guys starting on like gas can guitars right. and, um, you know, um, they burn the place up. My, <laughs> moms and dads getting mad because you know they're unraveling screen to get the wire for a string. Wow. You know they're 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 cutting broomsticks. So a lot of those materials were you know broomsticks for necks right. and things like that. Um, this is just a piece of one by two poplar with a piece of oak, uh, thin piece of quarter inch oak on top right. for the fretboard. Um, so are and you making those yourself, or is yep. there, are there manufacturers of them nope, out there? No, no, nope. wow. um, yep, uh, just kind of put them together. Wow, that's um, cool. I try to, you know, even though there's some modern conveniences, conveniences on this, like the tuners <clears throat> and the bridge, I try to keep the basic design raw, right. you know. Um, you know, um, I, I use some of the modern parts mm -hmm. only because I want to try to keep it in tune. Although that <laughs> doesn't always work out, but yeah. I want to try to keep it in tune as much as possible. Uh, but other than that, it's just basically a stick through box, right? You know, um, so any particular uh, cigar brands that work better than others? Um, you know, the the so this is this is like uh, Patron. Um, there's there's a couple others. Um, you know, um, th there's a few out there th that. I just basically look at, you know, it's got to be wood. There's there's some that are made out of cardboard. Right. Um, they don't hold up as well. No. Um, so what I look at is as long as it's made out of wood, mm -hmm. and I look at the joints. Like if you look at here, they're using like almost like dovetail joints here. Right. Um, that means it's built. You know, it's amazing how how well they built. It's like craftsmanship going into. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just to hold cigars right. and. Um, and the other aspect is it, you know, normally these will just get thrown out. Right. So there is a repurpose and a reuse uh, part. Totally. You know, part to it. Yeah, I was going to say, you made over 600 of these. What, what's your source for cigar boxes? Well, you got to keep that I, quiet. I, I got yeah, one out in the I, car from yeah, yeah. <laughs> You got people always looking for you? No, actually, <laughs> you know, friends and family, uh, they, they know I do it. So, that's cool. So they're always, you know. It's um, funny. I think about you a lot. There's a cigar shop in Bradley Beach. Right next yes. to Finn's, and he's always got a table outside with like a million cigar boxes on it. But he's selling. He's them. selling them, I think. So, yeah. um, so I, I'll, um, you know, uh, I'll give a sh shout out to uh, uh, L and B Cigars on Asbury on the Asbury Circle. Uh -huh. If you smoke cigars, go there. Right. <laughs> um, they've been very, very good to us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So. So he smokes but, more cigars, so he can make more uh, guitars. Something I want to want to interject real quick. Uh, just about a month ago, 
we mm-hmm. were at the Pennsylvania Cigar Box Guitar Festival, right. which John has been going to since it started 10 years ago. This was the 10th annual yeah, one. I was going to mention this, actually. And John uh, was very instrumental in helping us um, set the world's record for the largest cigar box in the largest cigar box guitar ensemble playing a single song. Right, so you're actually... Uh, bad to the bone, speaking of George Thorogood earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Guinness World Book record holder. So did you yes. play in that too, Tim? Oh, yeah, I, pl- I played That's guitar. Awesome. I played a cigar That's box killer. guitar. All right, so... A beautiful one that John made. You organized uh, this well, at the uh, at the festival. Well, so it's funny. Um, um, the um, the festival is, is put together every year. Um, by uh, Jim Lewin, uh-huh. um, fantastic he's, person, and his wife. Yeah, he's um, he owns the York Emporium, as a bookstore in New York, PA. Uh, right. Antiques, curios, other cur- nice. curiosities. Oh, it's a giant bookstore with um, all kinds of stuff. Little and, known uh, fact is, I actually went to preschool and kindergarten in York, Pennsylvania. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, nice, yeah, cool, exactly. well, very cool so place. Out there. Yeah, it's kind of your hometown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of in great. A weird way. So uh, I attended so many he, uh, parties at York College as yeah. a as a young child. <laughs> um, so so um, Jim Lewin and his wife really or, organized it. Mm. Um, but once I heard about it, I was like Jim, you know, let me know how I can help. And so I threw some ideas at him, and one of the ideas I had was to have loner guitars available there right. at the festival in case because um, one of the things. One of the things that we found out, we figured, well, you know, if we get like 20, 25 people, it's never been done f- before. Right. So uh, I was thinking, you know, no matter how many people we get, um, of course, you want to try to get as many as possible. But I was thinking if we got 30 people, we got the record. Right. So we found out when we got there, Guinness had set a limit. Had, we had to get at least 200, 250 people right. in playing. Right. And um, to get in the book. Mm. So um, I just, you know, I said, hey, Jim, you know, what if I just build some loaner guitars? Right. So, um, so um, I, um, I talked to my, my, all, uh, my daughter, Kate. Um, she works for Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. And I said, what do you think? And she, um, she actually. Uh, um, I mean, the Kickstarter page for you. Yeah. She actually I'll pay for the materials and stuff to build she, the guitars. She actually presented it to Kickstarter, and her boss actually featured it, and uh, we did a Kickstarter page. That's cool. And we raised some money to build um, thir- over thirty guitars, loaner guitars. Right. So up until <laughs> up until the day of the festival, I really didn't know if this idea was going to work. Right. And then we found out we needed two fifty. So I started I started a sign in sheet, and we had folks come in and. They were signing them out, and end up like at the last minute we were looking, for, still looking for guitar. I could have made fifty. Well, we we got up to, <clears throat> to uh, we still needed like twenty or thirty right. people. We our set was an hour before we were going to attempt the world's record. Right, and uh, so we got up there and we were trying <laughs> to encourage people to. We kept hearing the play. numbers. Right. Yeah, we kept hearing the numbers. We were giving out the numbers. We only need five more people or whatever. Yeah, but we got up to two hundred and sixty-three. Right. And we had to play a little, uh, we had to play, extend our set so a few more cigar so box guitars see. could be built. No way. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Good. So, so it ended up being, you know, a need. Right. I, really, I, I mean, I, I had no idea. I mean, I had, I had like a slight idea, but uh, I had no idea if it was really going to work. That's so, awesome. it, well, um, so was I, I had 30 uh, Lazy B um, uh, guitars there right. a, as part of the. Um, the uh, world record so it's kind of cool that's really cool. yeah now can people uh did you sell those while you were there can people still own a, a guitar that was played as part of the Guinness so book world record so they had the so we had an option they they could buy or they right. could return it so we had a few folks buy them that's cool and um and then i still have you know i still have some so Sweet. so we're, we're going to be recycling those that's as cool. well john always has cigar box <laughs> guitars for sale so, he can't stop making them so anymore. yeah right so that's cool. Um, so I saw, yeah, I noticed your Kickstarter. You exceeded your goal. Uh, so, so it was your daughter who helped you put put it over the top, huh? That's cool. Yeah. So they they featured it. Um, her boss, who's in charge of the music um, department right. at Kickstarter, had featured it and um, really pushed it. That's cool. Um, you know, I couldn't have done it without them. Right. So, 
So it, it was just it was just kind of cool to see it come to fruition. Yeah. So yeah. is it a tough process to get Guinness to come out and look at your event and that kind of stuff? I I wasn't I wasn't uh, involved with the pre, you know Jim Jim from York uh, Euporium. Mm. He pretty much took care of all that, did the application, got it approved and all that. Um, I will say, you know, and Tim can back me up, that, the, you know, they were very, very um, meticulous as yeah. far as, because they had, they broke us up into groups, and each group had a spotter. Right. And everybody had to come, and they had to physically see you with the guitar and sign in. Wow. And, um, you know, so they, they were, it was... You know, it wasn't just like, you know. But the good news, I think uh, I saw an email where we were approved by Guinness and it'll be in the next edition. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. yeah. The cool. largest cigar box guitar ensemble. <laughs> That's I became cool. a guitar player for a little while. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. 263 people playing Bad to the Bone, right? That's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, cool. You guys want to play another song for sure. us? Sure. Love to. Um, would you like to hear the washboard one? Sure. Let's uh, switch this out. This is another song that John wrote. Oh, I did. And in fact, we're playing uh, Thursday night. We're opening up at the uh, Brighton yes. Bar in Long Branch for uh, Thomas, Thomas Gabriel. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Johnny Cash's <laughs> grandson. That's cool. Uh, um, I understand he's got a great show. He does a lot of his grandfather's stuff and his, adds his own songs that he's picked up while on the road with his his grandfather that's really cool yeah september 26 you guys are at uh check out cigar box stompers at brighton bar also october 19th you're playing don jameson's costume contest at the brighton that's right Good yep. old don. Um, so get out and check out so cigar box stompers at those gigs um that's pretty cool i didn't even know thomas johnny's grandson was uh playing music is he from this area, do you know? I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, didn't Johnny live in Asbury there for quite a while? I know, um, I believe they founded the Berkeley Carret right. uh, Hotel. So they were probably, yeah, would make sense. Could be. Had yeah. some connection. Yep. At least knew about it. Yeah. I know uh, James Brown lived there for a while. Did he? Yeah, he waved to me one, one night, 3 o'clock in the morning, coming home from a gig <laughs> with uh, We're Not Brothers. And he goes by me. 90 miles an hour my guitar play was like james brown just passed us i was like no way so you're in the we're not brothers band is that mr mason uh yeah charlie uh, yeah charlie. i used to be a regular guest with those guys that's cool oh yeah I've charlie and truck charlie uh for quite a while <laughs> you can catch him every other friday down at the uh used to be that's cool very cool all right so this is one of your songs yes What's the, uh, what is the washboard guitar? Like, what's the difference between that and a cigar? Like, anything in terms so of sound? I or? think, you know, with the electric pickup, it's, you know, a slight difference. You're not getting, because it's not a box, you're, you're losing a little bit um, resonating mm. kind of tone, sound. Um, however, you do pick up, you know, an extra. You could uh, do a little bit of rhythm cool. on it. Right. So... Um, but like I said, with uh, you know, with the electric pickup, and you know, with amps being able to you know put different effects on it, right? Um, what you lose from not being a box, you can kind of gain, you know, through the amp and stuff. So, um, but then you you also have uh, the extra rhythm That's section. Cool. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Same old stuff. Same old stuff. It's 
Still has a nice sound too. I like that. Yeah, yeah. That's a cool one. I mean, like I said, with you know pickups and the amp, you can you can make it sound. sound you, you know, you can add the sound to it. But nice. That one looks like it's got a. Uh, I don't know if you call it a scientific fretboard or not. You got some like markings, just kind of give you a general <laughs> idea of what's going on. It's I guess more yeah. of a feel thing, right? Yeah, it's it's. Um, it um, it was just like you know whatever's it was like the bare necessity just right. to give you an idea of where, where you, you are at. yeah <laughs> right. and the rest you kind of got got to do by ear right you know but um, you know the markers give you a, you know a general landing spot that's really cool <laughs> for the note but then you got to kind of. your ear to kind of so it's a lot of trial be, trial and yeah, error just yeah, like make making adjustments them, yep <laughs> yeah. that's cool yep for sure awesome all right john bernick tim nolan i appreciate both you guys coming in thanks so pleasure. much it was awesome to meet you if you want to order a guitar if you want to find out more about the band go if to you Lazy want tickets B. for thursday night at the at the brighton brighton sure. bar let us cool. know yep we have discounted to tickets all right sweet so check out lazybcigarguitars.com uh this thursday with thomas gabriel johnny cash's grandson at brighton bar in long branch reach out to the guys get tickets for that also october 19th uh back at brighton again for a costume party yep sweet you guys gonna dress as cigar boxes for that or? <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do i think um i think we're gonna all dress like our drummer Oh, uh, really? Yes. <coughs> I'm going to have to dye my hair black. <laughs> What's his look? I'm going to have to grow hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. Does he play like oil cans or something? What's it? Or <laughs> he's got a real drum set? No, no, we're working on that. He's got a real drum set. That's so, cool. yeah. Awesome. Yep. All right. CVStompers.com also for direct hit on the band. Uh, appreciate you guys coming in. And go to YouTube. Check out the... Uh, Guinness Book of World Record uh, breaking performance, uh, 263 people playing Bad to the Bone on cigar box guitars. Congratulations right. on that. That's really cool. Uh, appreciate you guys coming in. I'm Evan Bomber. Follow me on Instagram, at Evan Bomber, and look for the Mulletcast on Facebook. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.